All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the software we're gonna be interacting with throughout this course. There's two main types of software you're gonna work with. One is R, the programming language, and the other is RStudio. And the way to think about this is when we write code, uh, we're gonna be writing code within the language of R. But where we write it is most often in RStudio. So RStudio is what we call an IDE or an integrated development environment. And you can think about that being the user interface that we use um, to write our code, to see the plots, um, to create new files, um, to generate reports and the like. Um, so we got two main things, R the language, and that's the code that we write, and R Studio, which is the interface that we mainly use um, for where we write our code. <clears throat> All right, so to install these, we got two different places. First, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go to um, what we call CRAN. And this is, so CRAN is the Comprehensive um, Archive Network. And this is where you can find a bunch of different things, but what we're worried about right now is installing R. So when you go to that link, you're gonna see that we can download R for Linux, for Macs, and for Windows, right? And if you go to these links, you're gonna see in a couple options for like Mac users, you're gonna see where you can either download the Intel um, driven um, binary, or you can download the, uh, if you have the new Apple Silicon, um, uh, you can go ahead and, and download uh, the version of R that is um, applicable to that. If you're a Windows user, if you go to here, you're gonna see, and you're gonna, pretty much be downloading this base and you can see right here, big bold install R for the first time. So when you click on those, uh, you will follow the interface, um, the commands, and that will get R installed on your computer. Next, you're gonna go to R Studio. And when you go to that link, it should identify what operating system your computer is and take you to the applicable one. Uh, so here it took me to download R Studio for Mac. So you can go ahead, download that. Um, likely you should have um, our version uh, 4.2 or higher. Um, here you can see for our Studio, it says our Studio requires our version 3.3 or higher. That should not be a problem whatsoever. You should, you'll likely be downloading our 4.0 or higher. All right, and once you once you download that, you can follow the instructions to install, um, and typically it goes pretty smoothly. So once you have those both installed, you're gonna be ready to go. Now the next thing is, well, how do we start interacting and writing our code? Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have two icons. And if I open up where my downloads go, you can see I have two, I have R and R Studio. Now recall, we write our, our code in R Studio, typically not in um, this R icon that we have. So we're always gonna be clicking on the RStudio icon. And when we do that, we can see we will have basically a new session open up. Um, now, yours will probably open up in a, a white background. Um, I've already down, or, um, changed my options so that I have the dark uh, background, but I'll show you where you can do that. Um, so this is basically how we start. Um, when we open up R. And now after you've written a bunch of stuff in R, you're gonna have um, your ID ended up looking like this on the left in the slide. Uh, basically, we have four windows that we work with. Uh, we have a console, that's what we have down here in the lower left. Um, and right now, since I don't have a file open, my console takes up this entire left-hand side. Right, And this is where you could literally write code if you wanted to, it's interactive. Um, I could go ahead and save variables, which we'll get into later on. Um, and so I can write code there. Now, on the upper right, this is what we call the workspace environment. And you can see here, I assigned a value to um, an object X, and that was listed up here. So as we start saving things um, and saving, creating and saving objects, you'll see them populated in, up in this right-hand corner. Uh, which we call the workspace environment. You can also see we have like an history, history tab. So that'll show all previous commands you've written. And there's a connections where if you want to connect to a certain database, you could do that through here as well. Now in the lower right hand, we have several different tabs. You can see we have files. Um, so this is where 
You can interact with the directories that you're in or that, that are subdirectories of where you're operating. Um, when we create plots, uh, so for example, let me uh, just create a plot right now. You can see that plot will pop up in the lower right hand side. Uh, when we ask for certain help information, right? Say you wanted to get some help, and I'll talk about this here in a second. That'll pop up in this help tab uh, where you have user um, help documentation and so on. So that's what we typically see in that lower right hand corner. Now, when you want to create a new script, let's say I want to create a new R script where I'm going to write code and I want to save that R script, I can go ahead, I can create a new R script here, and then now I can write in right in here. And so this may be a place where I want to do several different things and I want to actually save the code that I'm writing so I can reuse that later on. Okay. And we can save that hitting the save button and we'll have a window pop up and we can tell it where we're going to save it. Maybe we want to save it um, on our desktop and we can do so. All right, so go ahead, you can pause the video. Um, here's a couple exercises to get you working in our studio. Go ahead and work through these. Um, run the code that you see on the right and see kind of where things pop up within our studio, get familiar with it um, and get comfortable. And then go ahead and you can pick up um, uh, on the video. Okay, let's talk about getting help. Um, so there's several different ways that you can um, get help uh, around R or R Studio. One obvious way is just through the web, uh, through Google, um, Stack Overflow and Cross Validated. So Google, whenever you're gonna, whenever you're trying to figure out how to do something, like say um, I want to create a histogram within R and you don't know how to do that, if you just say create histogram with R, um, that will typically lead you to um, lots of good examples or tutorials to show you how to do that. And lots of times when you do that, you're going to see a website called Stack Overflow that pops up. And Stack Overflow, if you've not heard of that, is a website dedicated towards answering programming questions. It's fantastic. You can go in there, see questions. People will post examples of how to um, work through their problem and solve their problem. Um, different solutions will get rated um, so you can kind of see uh, the most popular solutions that tend to work the best versus those that were um, pretty poor advice. Uh, so you will get comfortable using Stack Overflow. It's a great place to get comfortable using for both asking questions and then eventually, hopefully, you can answer questions on there as well. Cross validated is very similar uh, to Stack Overflow. However, it's focused on statistical questions. So if you have questions about uh, what a certain parameter may be doing uh, for um, like within a random forest model, this would be a great place to kind of ask. Now, if you're looking for how to just keep up with the R programming language, um, there's a few different ways. Twitter is fantastic for the R community. Um, it's this hashtag R stats is what you want to follow. There's so much activity going on there. It's a great way to kind of see what's coming out within R. Um, great way to see like the cool things that people are doing with it in R. Um, definitely want to stay connected there. And then a couple other, there's an R bloggers. If you just Googled this, it would take you to a site that's a blog aggregator. There's something like well over 500 different R blogs um, that get aggregated. And so you could get emails once a day or once a week or once a month um, that's just summarizing a lot of great things that are happening across many different um, blogs that are focused on our programming. And then Tidy Tuesday, that's something that comes out every Tuesday. They post a new data set and a lot of people just work on doing some deep dives in that data set and doing some analysis, maybe creating some cool visualizations and posting it and getting feedback from other folks that do this. So it's a way to um, once a week, just check out a new data set um, and get your hands dirty with writing our code and getting some feedback. And typically all the feedback is very positive. So you rarely see people just being flat out rude. Now within R, when you need help, probably the most common way to do it is within, within the console is to do question mark and then whatever function you are looking for help on, right? So if I want to understand more about the square root function, I would do question mark and then square root, and that's the function call. And that will bring up 
help information, right? So as you start moving into using many different packages, lots of times you're like, oh, I want to do, I want to do something like I want to change the number of digits that I can round a number to. Let me go check the the round function, and it's going to give you a lot of good description information, and then I'll talk about the different arguments that you can apply, such as this digits. We can adjust the digits, and that'll adjust what we round a number to. All right, one thing to mention is we always want to know where are we working in um, as far as like what directory are we working in. So typically as we move forward, you're going to want to have a directory dedicated for this class. And you're going to want to have um, all the R scripts that you are creating and all the work you are doing to be associated with that directory. We'll talk later on, um, I think actually next week um, or in the next module about the idea of um, uh, working in our projects and that kind of helps with that. But for right now, you want to just understand what directory are you operating in? So if I go to this files, you can see that I am just working in my home. I'm not even working on the desktop. Now, programmatically, I could find that out by using this get WD function. And this shows that I am operating in this users and then this B29. That's just my, my ID, right? So that shows that's the location. Now, maybe I actually want to be working on the desktop. Well, one way to do that is I could do set WD and then I could specify the path, right? So users, my user information, and then on to the desktop, right? So now when I run get WD, I'm actually working in the desktop, right? So if I were to create an R script, and save that, it would default to save it on the desktop. Um, another way that we can change the working directory is, let's say I can go into a directory over here in this files tab. I can click to, I can find out, hmm, where do I want to do this? Ah, maybe I want to save it in this, um, my UC, UC Banner 7025, okay? Well, what I can do now is go to this more button here, and you should see this set as working directory. So once I have clicked to the directory I want to have as my primary working directory, I can just go ahead and hit that set as working directory. And it, you can see basically what it's doing is running this code, set working directory to this directory location. All right, one last thing. R is going to communicate with you in a few different ways. You're going to get errors, and that's okay. Um, and errors are going to basically mean something is wrong and the operation failed, right? It did not work. You're going to want to figure out um, why that happened. You will run into many errors as we go through this class, and that's fine. Just get used to it. You'll get warnings, okay? Warnings are a way of R telling you, look, we completed the computation, we did the computation, but something seemed to be a little bit odd or out of the norm, okay? And that's worth checking in to make sure uh, you understand why you're getting the warning. The last thing is gonna be a message. Lots of times you'll get a message, whether it's a function call, you're loading a package or what have you, and it's gonna communicate. And basically this is just a way of saying, um, hey user, here's some more information. Um, but don't worry about anything, press on. Um, and lots of times we'll be able to suppress those messages if we wanted to, right? But these are the three primary ways that you're gonna see R communicating back with you. Errors, warnings, and messages. Um, get used to them, don't worry about it. We're gonna run into errors um, and we'll just work through those as we come across them. All right, so things to remember. R is a language, R Studio is what we call the IDE, that's where we write our code. Within R Studio, we typically have four main panes. We have the script window, which we have right up here. This is like the file, right? In this case, it's a .r script. Let me go ahead and save this and I'll show you, right? See, this is gonna save as .r, my first script. We also have the environment, the global environment pane that's up here where we typically see all the objects we've created and we can see the history of all the code that we've ran. 
we have this lower what we call miscellaneous pane. This has the files or the directory that we're, we're operating in. We can see any plots that we create. We can also see packages that are installed on our computer, which we'll talk about later on. And we'll see help files and so on. And then the bottom left here is the console. Now, one thing to note, we can always change this, right? So typically, when I go to options, I can go to pane layout. And what I actually like to do is I often have my console in the upper right, so I can do that. And this is also where you could change the appearance. This is where I, I change my background to be a dark. Um, and there's many other options that you can do here. Uh, if you need help, uh, first stop is like normal, Google, um, and then Stack Overflow. Definitely stack, check out Stack Overflow for help. And then if you need help on a specific function, just recall it is a question mark and then the function name, and that'll pop up the help file within R or RStudio. Um, always know where you're working um, as far as your directory. And so you're going to want to make sure you always set your working directory to be working in the class directory for this course. And we can do that with get working directory and set working directory, or we can do that manually through um, the RStudio IDE. And the last thing is R, R will communicate you with you via errors, warnings, and messages. Um, so we'll get used to that as we move on. All right, any questions, I would say, first of all, go and read the chapter thoroughly um, for this lesson. Um, and if you have any additional questions, hit up the uh, discussion board within the, the course.